are the CRX VT front hubs. They allow you to run the bigger brakes. So at the standard they come with the 262mm brakes. And these have been upgraded to the, I think, Integra Type R calipers. So running 282s. Um, so it's quite large discs and kind of what the car uh, will appreciate. Or the driver will at least. And there's the other one. They're in reasonable condition. It comes with lower arms as well. Uh, obviously, ball joints um, down here is slightly old, probably replace that. And the drop link, um, anti roll bar drop link, is someone's just cut that off, so that's fair enough. Um, other than that, come to the ABS sensors we won't be using, so I'm going to take them off first to prevent them being a problem or um, at least to stop them being damaged. And the uh, these uh, break pipes, the flexible ones, have been cut off as well, which is good in a way because it means no crap can really get into the caliper. Um, so I'm going to just start off by uh, taking them off, taking these sensors off for the uh, ABS and it's all uh, on a 5mm and someone's put these, um, someone's put these Allen uh, bolts up in there, so these bolts has been a bit harder to get out than the rest. So I've just gone in behind here, scrape out some of the uh, dirt and stuff because this is where the uh, bolt screws into. And then I'm going to get a bit of this penetrating uh, fluid GT85 and then uh, just put the straw in and just spray it in there, leave it for a bit and hopefully I can just whack this little uh, bolt out. And now first I'm going to try and strip the whole thing down and replace whatever I need to replace. So. First of all, this is the uh, front uh, control arm and what I'm going to do is just undo this uh, bolt here. You can see someone's had a go and tried to round it a little bit and uh, we'll see how I fare with a 19. i will use the impact gun, see if I can crack it off. Success. So that's pretty good. Then I can just uh, take this uh, lower control arm using um, a fork, which is here. So, save that. And then you put the fork in. And I want to put it like that. There. And I'm going to use the hammer and whack down on that and just ping this off. So I'll do that next. So you can see here, I've uh, just used this uh, ball joint splitter, come down there and taken off the uh, lower arm. You can see that you always seem to damage the boot there, but I don't really care because I'm going to take these um, ball joints off anyway. Now the next thing I need to do is uh, undo this, or what remains of the anti front anti-roll bar drop brink. So I'm going to put it in the vise. So here we have the lower arm in the vise. I'm just quickly trying to clean some of the threads here. Get a bit of penetrating oil. Chuck that in there. And then again, I'm coming back with my impact just to get the party started. And uh, just let it spin. Okay, so that's good. Shocked it a bit. And then I'm going to get my Allen. So this is a 6mm Allen. And then what I'm going to do is just tap that into there. So there's two things that make sure that that is right the way home, but it also shocks possibly some of the rust off. Good. Then I can get my 19mm spanner and my 3 8 ratchet. And set it to do up. And then you can see here, gladly, this thing's moving. I've probably been lucky today, but sometimes you just got to cut them off, and uh, at least this will uh, fully come out. 
So that's uh, fully out of there. And you can see, happy situation. It's out of there, the ball joint's out of there. And I'll just stash some of these nuts up here for later on my magnetic base. But you can see uh, that's a good situation to be in. Now one of the next things I'm going to do is just uh, slightly slacken these 14mm bolts for the sliders off. And we'll just do that because um, it's easier just to undo them and nip them back up so then later on I'm going to take them off and re-grease them and everything and uh, it's just nice to know that they're going to come off. And then I'm going to come in with the 17mm and uh, undo these two bolts to take the caliper off and make this uh, whole hub a little bit lighter and nicer to work with. I've knocked the two 14s loose and then I can just get these 17mm uh, um, bolts out of here for the caliper. And there's one. And then that's the washer for it. Nice. So they're both out and I can take the caliper off. And you can see here, the caliper's free. I've got these two uh, retaining bolts that hold the um, flexi line on. For that, I've just got this little 5mm Allen in here. And uh, I can just push to the back. Undo that like that. And now my caliper is free. Also not a bad time to make sure that your um, caliper um, brake line bolt, which is a 14, also moves. So you can see here, my moves, which is nice. And um, just nip that back up. And you want to leave these in, ideally, because um, when I'm going to go to clean these, um, I don't want any stuff getting in the actual um, caliper itself. So that's good. I'll put it to one side now. So next up, I want to have a quick look and see if I can get these um, screws that hold the uh, disc on. And here I've got my impact driver, various sizes of different um, screw head for it, uh, screwdriver head for it, and then just find the appropriate one. I'll show you how it works. Well, that's a little bit dull. I didn't have the same the other side. But these are just um, free to turn. I had an absolute mission getting the ones on the other hub out, but I had to uh, basically use this, set it up so the arrow here is on the left, and um, and then hammer the back of it, and take it out, and then one wouldn't be done at all like that. So I had to get um, a drill, drill out the head of the um, little screw there, and then. Um, sand it flat when I've taken the disc off um, and then punch a hole in the top with a centre punch and then drill it out so it's a real mission so this is actually quite nice that these have come off but sometimes you have to get a bit more extreme with them but um, this is going to be much quicker now I can just take these off uh, by hand. Those off the discs are free to come um, one thing worth mentioning is these um, are obviously the CRX uh, VT hubs and have come already with the um, 282 mm uh, discs with the Integral Type R clappers so it's quite a nice um, upgrade to begin with and I'll uh, have a look at these discs. I'll probably change them because I always change um, discs and pads because it's a cheap thing to do and you need to rely on them but I'll just take this off now. Now I've got the uh, hub itself um, with the ball joint, so you can just remove the dust cover and um, it's obviously completely shot um, sometimes you have to kind of clip out this little ring that's there and um, from there to remove it but anyway that's out so I'm going to need um, new ball joints anyway then I've got these uh, little internal um, circuit pliers I'll see if this and it's playing ball or not, so put it in the two holes. Mm, no, it's not. See, one side is moving, the other's not. So, if that's your case, 
you get your big like, screwdriver, put it in here, and then I'm going to whack the end of it and try and move that somewhat. Knocking that round, you see it's spun round a bit, it's meant that it will actually be able to be moved. I'll just come in here with these pliers and just take it out. This one again is being a lot nicer. The other side um, wouldn't move at all, so I just smashed it off and uh, basically this circlip snapped because it had rusted in there so well. So this side I think may have been replaced um, sooner than the, uh, or more recently than the other side. That's the circlip. And now I'm left with this little fun game. I've taken the uh, ball joint off. You see this one's actually not as bad. It must have been done more recently. And for this I've got it obviously set up in the vise here um, so it can't go anywhere. And then I've got a 22mm deep. We'll go over the top here. And then I'm going to basically smash it out um, with a large hammer. Obviously you need to wear gloves, hearing protection and goggles. Make sure you don't get anything in your eyes and damage your hearing. Or smash your hands in the process. So this one really must have been only in there for a short while. It's coming straight out, um, so that's quite nice for me. Um, but it means it's going to be very easy just to pop this whole thing right out. There we have it. It's out. There's the hole left. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the other side because that's going to be much more painful to try and get out, and it will be more fun. So you can see with this one, it's much more corroded. I've actually put some penetrating oil around there, so it seeps down in between the uh, hub and the ball joint. And it's going to be the same process again. I'm just going to grab my 22mm, and this is um, a sacrificial extension bar. You see, I've used it plenty of times before, I don't use it for anything else. Um, in there, and give it some wax with a lump hammer. So I'm properly having to hammer this one. I think I've got it moving, but this one's going to be a much bigger effort. So you can see I've got a little lip showing there. That's good news, that means I'm on my way out of this. But yeah, this one's out. And uh, that is the method in the bin, but yeah, they're no joke. You sometimes just have to really smack them, but just make sure you've got it set up in the vice like this. You can't go anywhere, and uh, hammer away. I mean, I'm sure you can probably press them up with a 10-ton press. I have a 10-ton press that's currently, unfortunately, not working, but it's as good a method as any, and um, I'm not reusing it for anything, so we're out. So that is current status of my hub. Um, I've obviously got quite a lot of cleaning up to do. I'm going to paint these as well. Um, but this is where you want to be. And um, it's a good place to be because now I can place my lower ball joint. I can obviously replace my um, anti-roll bar drop plinks as well. And discs and pads I'm going to replace. Um, this would be the time if you're going to do it to think about um, your wheel bearing. So I'll just pop that out the vise and show you that. Just looking at this wheel bearing, it's kind of interesting actually because this um, stud has popped out. Obviously when it's been shipped, it's been knocked backwards a bit and it's now catching on the hub. So I'm just going to have to kind of pull that back. Um, two ways you can do this. You can just get a um, wheel bolt and then just pull it back. Or you can just tap it, and I think I'm just going to tap it a couple of times with a punch and just um, make it so uh, you can spin these, this hub and uh, check it over. These have now removed that gap, and the hub can spin. I thought the bearing was knackered at one point because the thing wouldn't spin, but it was just that stud. So if you get these shipped, just watch out for the, that, that you know, you haven't had a situation where that stud is just basically being whacked back by someone dropping in transit. Um, so there we have it, bearing seems pretty good actually, I've checked it out, um, but you just want to look for any axial plate, it's kind of easier to do when there's a wheel on it and you've got some leverage, but check it's not notchy or you're hearing any sound like there's loads of rust in it. I've had this a few times with these hubs and you're going to have it a lot of times when working on old cars, Is um, someone's already snapped these off for me, so happens a lot. But I want to show you my method of doing this. There's lots of methods, but I think this is quite a common one. And what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to come in and I'm going to uh, centre punch the middle of that then I'm going to drill it with progressively bigger drills and I'm going to be look to, uh, looking to take that whole thing out and then I'm going to tap the thread again with an M6 by um, I think it says M6 by 1.0 which is the standard thread um, for all the 10 mil heads on your Hondas, or well, pretty standard anyway. This is a sprung loaded centre punch and once you've found your um, mark in the middle you can just do that a few times and then I'll do the same to the other side so you've got to find the centre as well as you can do like that try not to slip, you slip like I just did um, what you want to do is get a little file sand a new face on it and uh, and then try again. I'm not going to try and do that again, I'm going to try and do it off camera. So there we have it, that's the new centre punch and that one there. I'm going to go in with a small drill bit and try and make a pilot hole right the way through both of these stubs. So the same thing but I tried to attack it from the other side. So um, clear up a little bit of uh, oil there. And you can see I'm most of the way through and nice in the centre of that hole. Lovely, I'm right the way through. So you can see there, and then I'm going to go for a slightly bigger bit and just take the rest of this thread out. So a slightly bigger bit, and then splits through that, and then keep on going. So now again, another slightly larger bit. And we're most of the way out there. You get to a bit that's just the same size as the hole almost, and it's just pretty much torn out the remaining thread. I might be able to hook him out here. Look, see how that's come out. on that one. What we got? Ooh. Needle nose. See it's just coming out. I'm gonna dig the rest of that thread out. There we have it, that's the end bit and uh, I just went through fully with that drill. And then I'll see if I can uh, sandwich these threads with the M6 by 1.0. This is looking pretty nice. I'm uh, being able to just make the turns, go a quarter of a turn back each time to recut the thread. You see it's poking at the bottom there now. So, that's a very, very good. Um, let's take that out there. I'll get a little bit of a lubrication on there and just cleans out the old crap. And I will go and get a bolt here, it's 10 mil. That should be easy to thread up. There we have it. So that's how you do it. I'm going to have to do the same the other side. The other one has got pretty uh, thin, but it just snapped a little bit. Sometimes it grabs and snaps. So what I'm going to do, and luckily I'm wearing my eye protection, always do that. What I'm going to do is get a punch and just punch that thing in. It's just a tiny little shell of a thing right now. And if you look, you can actually see it flexing slightly, even with a pick. So as I punch it, it's just deforming, so I think it's going to be quite easy. There we go, it's almost there. Yeah. See if I can grab hold of this. Maybe not, I'll just maybe flip it over, punch it out backwards, but you can see it's all deformed, just the, that's basically the inner, or the outer core of this uh, screw that was in there. There we have it, so I'm just kind of punching them from each direction. I think a couple of taps here and it will be out. Have it, it's out. 
and then I'm just going to, again, clean it up a bit by spraying a bit of what is kind of like WD-40 in there, and I'm just going to use that same uh, tap and just tap that thread. There we have it. It's one all nicely tapped. That's how you get around these issues. Center punch, drill the various drills until you get it nice and thin, and then it will either just kind of come out with a drill bit, or you can just basically pop the sides of it down. But you can see here I've got nice um, threads, and then I can put this is how the uh, arm goes in the car, you have your ball joint through there and this is the little cover that people tend to, it's like this person, snap the heads of these bolts off and then uh, leave it, so that's not what I'm going to do because I've done it properly, so um, that's it, that's the whole arm almost fully stripped, everything out of it and uh, now it's time to build it up